Hey traders, I've released a brand new momentum-based swing strategy on Arago. I've been running this strategy for about four weeks now, and in this time it's generated 29 signals and it's got a win rate of 100%. It's up about 6% so far. Remember that this isn't financial advice and just because it's been successful so far doesn't mean it's going to continue to be. So far so good though. So how does this strategy work? What are the rules within it? I'm going to break these down for you today and I'm going to talk about the theory behind this strategy and why it's been effective so far. And keep watching till the end of the video because I'm going to show you just how easy this is to replicate for yourself. Let's dive in. The strategy itself has got two buy rules and two sell rules and it looks to capture swings and momentum. We're looking to capture these short term upswings and downswings which means that in theory this strategy should work both in a rising market and a falling market. So the buy signal has three rules. The first one is based on price action. Looking at the 15 minute chart here, we're looking for falling candles followed by a reversal of this trend. So we're looking at the low price of each candle and the high price of each candle under each of the two sets of rules. We're looking for three falling lows or three falling highs in a row followed by a higher high or a higher low. This means that we've got a strong indicator of one of these short term swings happening. The second rule that we're looking for is we're looking for the five minute price to be above the 15 minute whole moving average. For those that haven't seen my video where I compare whole moving average versus exponential moving average and simple moving average, then go and check it out. In simple terms, the whole moving average is a weighted moving average that applies more focus on the more recent data. So what we see is we see this quicker price swings compared to a simple moving average here in blue. We're mixing different time frames here, so we're looking at the five minute closing price compared to the 15 minute whole moving average. So by having a rule that the five minute closing price needs to be above the 15 minute whole moving average gives us an indicator that this market is in an upswing at the time of trading. The third rule, we've also got a rule looking at RSI, making sure that the five minute RSI is below 40. What you'll see here in these short term swings is when the short dated RSI falls below 40. This generally means that we're in an oversold area in the short term, giving us an opportunity for potential rebounds. So by combining these rules, we know that we're potentially in an upswing because of the price action and the whole moving average. And we've got an indicator of an oversold conditions. If these conditions are met, then we'll trigger a buy signal at the market price. On the flip side of this for the sell signals, we're looking for the opposite in the price action. We're looking for three higher highs in trading candles, followed by a lower high. Or alternatively, we're looking for three higher lows, followed by a lower low. On the sell signals, I'm not interested in having the same rules in place about moving averages and RSI. And on the sell side, I don't just want to sell at market because there's a possibility that one candle could be a slight correction in an otherwise continually uptrending market. So for example, in these conditions, I would have sold here and missed out all these gains on the way up. So instead, what we're doing is creating a limit order. For my limit orders, I'm using a multiple of the average true range or ATR. I've also done a video on this, so you can go and check that out if you want to. The average true range is a volatility indicator. It tells you how quickly the swings are moving in the market. The more bigger candles you see, the larger the ATR. Whereas if you get lots of short candles, then the ATR is going to be smaller. The way that we're using ATR here is that we're taking a multiple of the ATR and adding that onto the closing price to set the sell limit. So in this example here, this signal could have occurred when the price was around 69,800. The ATR at this time was about 240. So a sell limit of three ATRs would be 240 times three. So the sell limit here would have been $720 above the closing price of this candle. And if we get another sell signal before this price is filled, I've got a rule in that this limit price will keep updating as the price rises. So that means that hopefully we can catch some of these upswings. Now that's the theory behind it. Now let's take a look at the real thing. Let's take a look at the scenario in our algo and have a look at the actual rules in my trading algorithm. By the way, if you like this content, then give me a like and a comment down below and subscribe for more content. If we take a closer look at the strategy itself, you can see the two sets of buy rules and the two sets of sell rules. The first set is looking for lower highs and the second set is looking for lower lows. For the lower lows, I'm feeding the 15 minute price into these condition blocks along with these lag blocks. So this condition block is looking whether the current 15 minute low price is below the lag one low price. So below the last candle price. This condition block is looking whether lag one is lower than lag two and so on with three and four. So we're looking for this pattern of three lower lows in a row followed by a higher low. I.e. the first candle back is below the second candle back. 
the second candle back is below the third candle back, and the third candle back is below the fourth candle back. So the current candle is higher than the last candle, and the three candles below that are continually falling. So for the second rule, we've got the five minute closing price being fed out of this data watcher, and another 15 minute closing price fed out of this one. The 15 minute price is going into a whole moving average block, and we're looking for whether this five minute price is higher than the 15 minute whole moving average. And lastly, we're feeding the five minute closing price out of this data watcher into an RSI block, and we've got a condition block looking whether the RSI is below this fixed number, which is set to 40. For the second buy rule, we've got the same thing, except for this time, we're feeding the high price out of this 15 minute data watcher block. We're still looking for three consecutive falling blocks through these condition blocks, and we're looking at whether the current block is now higher than the last block. Again, we've got the same rules around whole moving average and RSI. If these conditions are triggered, then we're buying through these blind blocks. Within the blind box, you can see I'm setting a market order at 100% of the value of the account. For our sale rules, you can see these are slightly simpler. We've no longer got the rules with RSI and whole moving average, and we're just looking at price action. Again, we're feeding out through the data watcher blocks, the 15 minute low price, and we're feeding it into condition blocks, looking at whether the current block is now lower than the previous block, and whether the three previous blocks before that were all rising. This sell block, as you can see here, is set to a limit order, and again, we're selling 100% of the value. For the limit price, you can see here, we're feeding in the ATR value times three through this maths block, and we're adding that to the 15 minute closing price. The ATR inputs, as you can see here, are the high, low, and close, and this block calculates what the ATR is. And through these math blocks, we're working out the multiple and adding it to the closing price. This set of rules is looking for a reversal in the low candle price, and the top rule is looking for the high price, as you can see here in this block. If I close down this strategy, I can show you some of the backtest results and some of the thought process behind it. When I'm backtesting, I like to do a mixture of short-term and long-term testing. So I'll do a test around one month, three months, six months, and a year and three years. If I want to run a new backtest, I can simply click on backtest, set my start date and my end date, and my starting balances, and click run. For a one-year backtest of this strategy, you can see we made 367%. Although remember that this is backtesting and the actual results may vary. Let's take a look at some of the live orders. As we said, in theory, this strategy should be okay for all market conditions because it's looking at short-term swings. And so far, you can see we've got lots of small gains. As you can see here, there will be days when there's more than one signal a day, and then there'll be two or three days without a signal at all, but generally, on average, we're looking at about 30 signals a month. And so far, we're up about 6% in four weeks with a 100% win rate. So there you have it. If you want to check out the strategy yourself, I've made it free for you to access in our algo. You can go and play with it, backtest it, and see if you can improve on it. Let me know how you get on, and if you've got any questions or comments, then leave them down below. Remember that I'm not a financial advisor, and this isn't financial advice. Trading involves a high level of risk. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. Always thoroughly backtest and understand any strategy before running them live, because you could lose all your money. Happy trading.